Bag fuel, baby. First thing that I wanted to address up here, where Han didn't notice, I wanted to address publishing, right? Because publishing, we had Cormega on, you know what I'm saying? And I, I saw people talk about it on, on camera saying, oh, y'all y don't know about um, the BMI. They, um, they can collect the royalties for the um, records and stuff like that if, if, if you're not signed with a major. We do know that, right? But the point that we're talking about is the mechanical royalty. The mechanical royalty is the most difficult royalty to attain because it's based upon the record sales that go on when people buy it. So when you have an independent project, it's hard to keep track of, of those record sales. Thus, you never really get the independent mechanical royalty when they put the record out. So that's the hard part. So you get a producer that might get $5,000, but that's his only $5,000 he gets from the independent joint. Crazy. So that's the hardest thing. So you can get the performance royalties where things is played and all that. That's what ASCAP and that is for, is for the performance royalties. That's what they collect. Look that up and learn that. I, I think that was a good conversation. I recently, I just got a BMI check mm -hmm. um, for a song I wrote like 10 years ago, 12 years ago. And I tell people all the time, register the music, but like people don't understand there's differences. Because when people see like people sell their catalogs and stuff, they think it involves every dollar made from the music. Mm -hmm. Not knowing some money still comes to the artist, even with having sold the catalog. And um, there's always a time limit on that. But that's, that's a fact, though. It's like to, to know that is super important, especially as an independent artist, because you need every dollar you can get because they're not rushing to give you dollars. You dig? Yeah, because people don't really know where to collect from. Right. That's the problem. Like, when you're a producer, you have many ways to collect. You get your points, you get your advance, and you get your publishing. You know what I'm saying? And if you get a single, you get performance publishing, too, which is why you sign up with BMI, CSAC, et cetera. You know what I'm saying? So people got to learn that when you're coming into in, this business and you're trying to be a creative, you also need to learn where you're gonna get your money from. You don't yeah. you, you can't wait for somebody to teach you the different ways that you make your money. Yeah, you, you know what I'm saying? Because there are people that have a lot of money in BMI that never register and your money's just sitting there and they're not gonna call you. Nobody calls you that says come down to come get these and millions that they? you earn. That's you know what I'm fact. saying? And um like uh you were just saying like um you gotta know where to get your money, but like um oh with the artists, a lot of artists they're not even doing like split charts. You mean split yeah. sheets? Split sheets, yeah, pardon me. Split sheets, like, they just they just put songs together, put it out. There's no paperwork. There's no nothing. You know, and it just exists. Yeah, yeah, but you should definitely, when you do a record with anything that you produce, anything that you make, before you leave the studio, you will want to do a split sheet. Yeah. But split sheets business, for some reason, in our community, when you bring the business to the creative, it makes people feel funny. You know what I'm saying? But then it's like, I right, well, well, once we do this record, you're tired, you're sleepy, you know what I'm saying? You didn't drink. You're not thinking about doing a split sheet. They don't know that that's official. When you leave there and you write a split sheet and everybody signs off on it, that's your rights, right? That's yeah. your rights right then and there. Yeah. And they don't get that. So once you leave that studio and that split sheet is not confirmed, it's up for debate when the lawyers get involved in it. Because you can say all oh, melody, lyrics, hook. Once you write the hook, you're all, you are supposed to get 16% of the record if, if, if you write the hook. So if you got multiple people writing the hooks and writing words and all that, then you got to decide what percentage of this hook or this record belongs to you or them. And it always gets cloudy later because everybody remembers things the way that they remember it. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not fact. necessarily how it happened. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So keeping your business tight from the beginning in the creative side is very, very important. Yeah. How do you register your song? Because, see, a lot of the times when people are doing things, all they know is... The fancy parts, studio, go in, record, right, throw it up, yeah. Then the magic's gonna happen. Instagram stuff. That's just just what it is. There's mm -hmm. now we have to really translate. It's more magic of we. I don't think it's sexy enough to go and register your song to have the split sheets because all they show on video is the weed we're smoking. Now if a guy Esso comes in, he's iced out. You come in, Jones, you iced out. Be like, yo, here's the split sheet. This is how we going to bust our bread. Yeah. This is <laughs> how you thought they're going to eat. How do you make it provocative? Because most dudes are ignorant. They don't know. Yeah, I've seen um, people even get scared off by good business. Yeah. 
You, Ooh, you say did. that again. I've seen people get scared off by having good business. Because black people, notoriously, we've been shown that lawyers will snake us. That's the urban legend, even though that's not the truth most yeah. times. I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. When when we we're, talked to Roddy Rich, yeah. right? He shed light on me because I said, yo, the lawyers aren't telling y'all that these are bad deals. He's like, nah. So I, I don't necessarily mm. think that the lawyers are snaking them. Some lawyers might not know. Like, just because you have legal representation, that don't mean they're good. That's true, too. You know what I'm saying? So, And they need money, too. And when you sign that paperwork, they get paid. Yeah. So they might want you to sign that paperwork so they can get paid and not even worry about you because the odds of you coming out and becoming a big star really are slim and none. So what does it take to find a good lawyer now? That's that's a question and a topic. That's true. You find good lawyers through... um, Referrals, the same way I found my dentist from Ghost. Mm-hmm. That's a fact. That's how you do it. That's a fact. I called Ghost. I said, Ghost, you, but you coming from the dentist? Yeah, is, is she good? Yeah, get this woman. The Chinese dude's good too, but this is who you want to <laughs> get. When you call, you do that. I use the referral. Mm-hmm. I'm getting all. I'm getting my teeth done. I'm, I'm in my process of fixing my stuff and Let all me ask that. You this, Why? Because he got he found me a good dentist. What if you coming into this game and you really don't have a network? You really don't have a foundation. Who you gonna talk to to get you that referral? It, you know, I was gonna say, if, like, real quick to draw back what you said like, yeah. about, like, I'm not an artist. You know, mm-hmm. I, I worked in management and but not, you know how to so, maneuver like right. an artist. I, like, I had a, a partner, my my man Z Rich. He kind of was smart to the game, so he gave me a lot of game. You know, because he made mistakes and then learn. You know, I learned from him. Mm-hmm. Got you. But a lot of people don't have that. But like, I just recently seen an interview. I don't want to say the artist's name. He said his criminal defense lawyer does his music stuff. <laughs> And I'm like, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm like, yo, that's insanity. You Why dig? is that, though? Because he trusts him, because he got him off some cases. But I'm like, this is two different things. That's like asking your barber to um to do your nail. Or no, that's like asking your barber to be your dentist. Yeah, exactly. You dig? Like, no, I think you did it right, asking your barber to do your nails. nails. Yeah, yeah, like yeah, the yeah. Asian yeah. women be doing. Yeah, that that is cool. a great example. I mean, I don't even understand. I mean, but people don't understand that entertainment law Yo, yo, listen, I have producers that tell me his man is going to be his lawyer. And I'm like, what you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, we argued about this, though. See, y'all see, y'all like, this a game. Like, no, be like, be like, see, see, like is, is your man, the, is your man the a lawyer? Yo, yo, bro, the I have been in the game. I have been in the game <laughs> yeah. already for 10, 15 years yeah. when I had this producer. I'm not going to say his name neither. <laughs> he came to me and said, I said, yo, I, I placed the record for you. You need a lawyer. He's like, yo, my man going to be my lawyer. Your man who? Is he in the game? I mean, has he done? <laughs> is he a lawyer? <laughs> yo, yo, no, no. He is a lawyer. Okay. But then I said, has he done this type of law? Because you have to know points, bumps, royalty rate, mm-hmm. all types of stuff that you need to know. And he said, well, I think he, he can learn it. I said, yo, that's not possible, bro. I said, you can't, he can't learn this on the fly. Yeah. That's he true. has to be an entertainment attorney to understand this lingo. And even if he went to school for this type of legal representation, he still got shit to learn. Stakes you know, you know what it is? It's that, especially when it comes to our people of color, that trust factor. Mm-hmm. This is the dude that ate Chinese food with me when I had nothing. Does it make sense? Look, he's getting annoyed. Yeah. Because <laughs> he, he hates that type of Yeah, we logic. probably feel the same way. I'm part of minority in like, I, number one, I don't, I'm not a big believer in bad deals because most of us are adults. So we sign what we sign. It's up to us to know what's what's in our best interest. Nah, it to, depends to, on the position you in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but you I, sign deals based upon need. If, that's a hundred percent fact. So it doesn't have to be knowledge because you could know it's bad, but oh, you can need oh, yeah, the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's a fact. Listen, that, that's the most. That. Is there a way to manipulate a bad contract? Well, I remember uh, Irv Gotti said, "Make a hit, and then you take a lighter to the no, contract, I mean, I mean, and you but, renegotiate." But, uh, nigga. We, we Hammer was the first person to say that. Once your stock goes up, you can renegotiate everything. There is power in renegotiation. Mm-hmm. People don't understand that. But most people don't even renegotiate because they be happy. They They're be like, okay, that worked. Let's go on to my next term. I, I just want to get to my next term. So say, say you been there tight and you ain't had nothing and now you pop out and you got a hit. Right, you got to go in. You got to renegotiate I mean, your contract, and you might not get more money, but you re, but you will renegotiate your promotion budget. Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm this guy now. 
So I need you. You gotta promote me now. That that budget will now keep you out here longer and give you what more time to spread your name around. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You can go back in there and say, well, you didn't give me the discretionary fund. Let me get a discretionary fund now. Put fifty thousand dollars in it. Let me work my thing. Let me get my keep fresh out here. Let me move around. Let me pay these people to do things for me. You know what I'm saying? But people don't understand renegotiation and, and, and its power. I mean, we, and people be scared. 